So here we need a response, uh, a binary response to a question essentially. Is this power plant up to specification or not? In other words, does the mean weld strength, so let's represent that with mu, that would be the mean weld strength of welds at this power plant. Does it exceed 100 pounds per square inch? This is our question, okay? So how do we formulate the test? Well, we'll we're going to start out by assuming that we are less than or equal to, in other words, we don't meet the weld strength, the specification. And then the alternative, the burden of proof, what we want to test is that they exceed 100 square, uh, pounds per square inch. Okay. Now, see how these are competing claims that are mutually exclusive. Um, and you see why we put the, the one that needs to be proven into the alternative. The burden of proof is on this guy. So it's in the alternative. A nice place to start uh, to, to assume to be true is that it doesn't. For obvious safety purposes, we shouldn't assume that it does meet strength, uh, the specifications, and then try to prove that it doesn't. That wouldn't be wise. Okay. Now, in practice, there are two. Uh, there are some some just some conventional differences uh, in, from one text to another. Some textbooks will argue that this the null hypothesis should always be a simple statement. That means always have an equal sign. And since in my course, I'm teaching from a textbook that does use that convention, that's why you saw in a previous slide that I had equal sign for the form of the null. So this would be the uh, um, alternative notation, or I should say um, interchangeable, just to not confuse it with the alternative hypothesis notation for this guy, for the null. And the alternative would be clearly stated exactly the same as the other. Okay, so the argument here is that you keep the null a simple, what's called a simple statement, which means you assign one value for the starting position for what you initially assume to be true, as opposed to a complex statement, which is what this is, this is saying, right? Because mu is less than or equal to 100. Well, there's infinite values less than or equal to 100. So the convention is either go with this. Either way, the, in practice, it's the same thing. What we will do is, so if the, if the, assumption, the, the assumption is that if we reject that mu equals 100, so we reject HO, if the conclusion is, of the test is reject the null, if we rejected it at mu equals 100, because we had strong evidence that mu was greater than 100, then wouldn't we have rejected it for everything less than 100 as well? And therefore, is the, the statement is kept at that boundary, okay? And you could also see why this one is also favorable for some others. They prefer to write less than or equal to because this is what you're actually saying. You're rejecting, if you do reject the HO, you're rejecting that it's less than or equal to. Okay, so what I'm going to do, as you're going to see in my answers on the next slide, is just to keep with that convention that my particular book uses, but also just remind you that you'll see in other books, they will use inequalities in the null as well. And now you know why. Okay, a matter of preference. Okay. Next, another example, you can work with it, work on this one uh, on your own, pause these videos when I, when I show you examples to try them on your own before you just look at the results. But here we're clearly testing a proportion. So the, we need an answer. Should we give these people money or not? Okay, so when you have this kind of situation, hypothesis tests are great because they could say, hey, let's look at the evidence, which is data. And let's make a decision based on that evidence. The evidence is always impartial, or sorry, partial, in the sense that it's sample data. So it's we're making decisions with partial information, right? Okay. So here we want to test. Let me do the alternative first. Um, 
we want to test that the proportion of um, people at this large, large organization, members of this large organization that support a project has to be greater than 55% in order for us to give them funding. So the burden of proof is on in the alternative. You need to show, evidence needs to show that it's greater than 55% before I start giving you money. So why don't we start out assuming, well, it seems natural that it isn't, right? We could do less than or equal to or just equal to 0.55 for the similar reasons that I discussed in the previous slide, okay? And that would be the hypothesis statements for this particular hypothesis test, okay? Keywords here, more than 55. In the previous example, exceed 100. Okay, look for words like exceed, more, less than, at most, um, different, not equal to. Those would indicate an alternative hypothesis that is a not equal to sign. Okay, but not in this case. This was clearly testing a direction. We call this a directional test. It's more specific, more than. Okay, moving along, here's the results, exactly as we had before. Okay, now, there are some errors that you can make in hypothesis tests. 